Good morning and welcome to the review of the Ultra Temp 2. Roll the beauty shots. Today's review is going to be a little bit different than other type of reviews and that's because I'm bringing you guys along on my run today here. It's a little bit rainy but it's going to be nice. So I'm going to run directly up there and then I'm going to follow the ridge over there and then down again. It's going to be really nice, it's going to be a way to show off the Team 2 and what it's capable of. Ultra is together with Topo Athletic, a company that focuses on a foot shaped fit for their running shoes. The differences between those two is that Topo Athletic is focusing on different kind of drops, making their lineup a little bit more diverse in the drop department, while Ultra is focusing on the zero drop and making that one as good as possible. The new Ultra Temp 2 has three new features that really separated from the last version. And that's a narrower fit, it's the Quantic midsole, and it's a less aggressive grip underneath. The stack height is 29 millimeter, and since it's a zero drop, that means that it's 29 in the heel, 29 in the forefoot. And that means actually that there's a lot of foam, even for those who are heel landers in a zero drop shoe. Generally, they've made a new shoe with the Timp 2 and we're going out to test it right now. So, up there, here we go. The fit of the Timp is really foot shaped. You can see it right there. Uh, you can also see it by it's being a little bit wider here. So there's a lot of room for the toes. The Timp 2 is though really narrow in this area. So if you have bunions or wider forefeet, then this might actually be a little bit of a downer. I know for a fact that they're actually changing it in the Temp 3. So they're listening to their fans. If you can run in these shoes, then it's really, really nice though. And I had issues in the beginning with the width and it's not a problem now. It's uh, adapted about 30, 40 kilometers and after that I didn't notice it at all. The heel is really nicely padded. It's not too much and I really don't like it when it's too much. Uh, it creates a really soft feel, but it doesn't hold your feet as well. So the lockdown around the ankle is really good. I've had a couple of issues with like the feet uh, twisting around in the shoe a little bit, but I actually think that's my fault and I'm not tying the laces properly. So you shouldn't think about that. Um, generally, I love having this shoe on and the narrow fit actually fits me really well. And the shoe has adapted to me at a really nice pace. If you need a wider foot shape shoe, then you might want to look for other types like the Lone Peak uh, or the Olympus, or maybe try like a Ultra Venture or a Terra Venture or all those ventures that Topo has. I'm a US 10 and a half and I'm always 10 and a half apart from in the Topo Ultra Fly 3. So this shoe fits me perfectly in a US 10 and a half. So I think it's true to size. I have no idea what other people think. Oh, this place is nice, isn't it? Look, there's snow on the mountains in July. That's not a good thing. Okay. Ah. Now, maybe I should talk about the feel of the shoe. So, how does it feel? 
So there's two different feelings when running in this shoe and that's also because it's a hybrid. So it's a shoe that's supposed to be used both on gravel, asphalt and in the trails. And on gravel slash asphalt, it's an okay shoe, but the softness of it, the, yeah, the feeling is just a little bit bland. It's really nice to run in, but it's not something special if you compare it to other road running shoes that can do the same type of uh, terrain. As a trail shoe, the Tim 2 does a really good job. Uh, by no means, it's not a fast shoe. It's not a racer. It's not super agile. It's just comfortable. It's fun to run in and it just really works. I love getting out on some technical stuff, some forest trails where you just have to do some direction changes. I'm really happy about taking it home to Norway this year, especially because of the weather, which is a little bit wet. It's not a good shoe for wet trails though. And I had a little bit of that on the way up to this point so far today. And it's been a little bit slippery. The grip on the Lone Peak is a lot better and and if you need a little bit more of a soft terrain shoe then the Lone Peak is a lot better for that. But generally I actually think I prefer the Tim 2 when running. There's also a little bit of a difference between running on trails and asphalt gravel uh, especially for the calves and the Achilles because the, the quick change of terrain here makes it a lot easier on the Achilles tendons when it's a zero drop shoe. I've had this shoe on for some longer cruises in Denmark and it's on gravel, it's really nice but it's really really hard on my Achilles and my calf muscles. I need to really train up to be strong enough to handle a zero drop shoe. So this is very important for you who want to try something like this. Go easy into a zero drop shoe so you don't get any calf problems or Achilles problems in the beginning. Okay, stability wise, the Tim 2 is an ultra shoe. That means it's a natural running shoe, it's a lower drop shoe, and it means that there's less added support for pronation. Uh, I would love to have a little bit more uh, in the upper uh, on the medial side in this shoe. So it's a neutral running shoe. It has a little bit less support than the usual shoes I review. So. Uh, I can actually notice that on the longer runs, my ankles and my knees feel a little bit more sore. My Achilles hurt a little bit more. So it's a really good shoe. It just needs a little bit of support uh, for, for, for the pronators. And I think they're adding that in the Temp 3 as well. So they're really listening, trying to improve on what the shoe is and what it could be in the future. Okay. Let's do the summary with a view. So the fit is a little bit narrow. It adapts to your foot, but if you need a little bit more space for your bunions or your wider toes, then go for a Lone Peak or a Ultra Venture for Topo, something similar to that. The running feeling in terrain is by far the best. So this type of terrain, really good. If you're running asphalt, gravel, that type of stuff, then it's okay, it's not perfect. Uh, stability wise it needs a little bit more medial support in the upper in my opinion but it really works and for neutral runners it's it's really perfect but for terrain running I really would love a little bit more support I really hope you've enjoyed this review on the run I have I love running in this place if you like this video please give it a thumbs up consider subscribing if you're into these kind of running videos if you have a question about the shoe write to me in the comments down below uh, if you want to support me, go to my website and buy some really awesome running socks. Anyways, it's starting to rain. I'm going home. Have a good day, have a great run, and I'll see you next time. Bye!